So I'm by no means an expert in network security, but I still find stuff like this pretty cool. So today we're gonna to take a look at a few articles that talk about how WireGuard is gonna be brought into the Linux kernel. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So let's have a look at this first article from ZDNet by Stephen, whatever this last name is. So VPNs will change forever with the arrival of WireGuard into Linux. So the new long awaited technology will change how VPNs work first in Linux and then the rest of the VPN world. So let's find out why this is such a big deal. After years of development, WireGuard, a revolutionary approach to VPNs, was finally fast-tracked into the Linux kernel. Now at long last, WireGuard is in Linus Torvalds' code tree. That means WireGuard will appear in Linux kernel 5.6, which should be out sometime in April 2020. So if you're watching this after April 2020, let me know if it's actually been integrated. So this has the potential to change everything about VPNs, not just in Linux, but in the entire VPN world. And that's because essentially all VPN services run off of Linux servers. And this is the case for a lot of web technologies just in general. I think part of the reason of it is just because Linux is free, so it will just inherently lower cost. Whereas if you're gonna run a Windows server, then you actually have to pay for licensing fees. But I'm, I'm guessing that's probably most of the reason that Linux is used for this and also for just general web technologies. So VPN services such as StrongVPN and Mulvad, Mulvad? I'm gonna go Mulvad. VPN have already seen the writing on the wall and are moving their software stacks to WireGuard. So this is being made easier because WireGuard's code, which is licensed under the GPL 2.0, is already widely available on Android, Windows, macOS, BSD, Unix, and iOS. So I'm gonna have a look at a few articles a bit later that are a bit older, and back then it wasn't available on Windows. So I probably won't read through those entire articles, but when I link them, you'll see that they're a little bit older and mention that it's not available there, but it is now, okay. So they're doing this because as one of WireGuard's biggest fans, Linus Torvalds, if you don't happen to know who Linus Torvalds is, he's, he's a little important in the Linux community, you should probably go find out who he is. So said, can I just once again state my love for it and hope it gets merged soon? Maybe the code isn't perfect, but I've skimmed it and compared to the horrors that are OpenVPN and IPsec, it's a work of art. Now I haven't looked at the code base myself and even if I did, it's written in C. I can't read it. I'm just gonna assume that someone who knows this much about programming like Linus Torvalds probably knows what he's talking about. So in more detail, WireGuard claims that compared to behemoths like Swan slash IPsec, or OpenVPN slash OpenSSL, in which auditing the, the gigantic code bases is an overwhelming task, even for large teams of security experts, WireGuard is meant to be comprehensively reviewable by single individuals. So there's certainly something to this. The WireGuard code base has about 4,000 lines of code, while the popular OpenVPN has over 100,000 lines. Which would you rather debug? Now I've talked about how lines of code generally don't matter when it comes to like software minimalism and software bloat, but there is one place that lines of code actually does matter, and that is for code maintainability. So if you have a code base that is 100,000 lines of code, that is just not maintainable by a single person. Obviously, you can have a group of people, but even then, people are very likely to miss things. So if you were to have that exact same group working on a code base that's significantly smaller, they're much less likely to miss something. If you just have an individual looking at the code base, they still might miss something, but with a small code base with a team, they're much more likely to catch any bugs that could possibly be there. So that's just why it's better to have a smaller code base when security is really, really important. So despite this simplicity, WireGuard incorporates state-of-the-art cryptography technologies such as whatever any of these are. I have literally no idea about cryptography. I can't tell you if any of these are good. I'm just gonna take their word for it that these are all really good cryptography protocols. So as WireGuard nears mainstream acceptance in the Linux kernel, its creator Jason Donenfeld is still working out its rough edges. The WireGuard site now states that some parts of WireGuard are working towards a stable 1.0 release while others are already there. So let's see, in a Linux kernel mailing list message, Donenfeld added he was running multiple automated WireGuard code tests for various code trees on pretty much all Linux hardware architectures. And along the way, even though the continuous integration at the moment is focused on the WireGuard test suite. It has a habit of finding a lot of bugs and regressions in other weird places. For example, Linux Next is failing at the moment on a few architectures. So there's little doubt that WireGuard, which has been in development since 2015, so it's actually very, very new. In the world of technology, this is a little old, but compared to something like OpenVPN, 
it's a very, very new project. So it will be ready for prime time by this spring. By then, VPN developers will already have WireGuard powered VPN programs and services ready for both VPN service providers and end users. So this will not immediately put an end to other VPN technologies, but if WireGuard lives up to its promise, you'll be able to see its end from here. Tomorrow's VPN on Linux and everywhere else will be based on WireGuard. So I don't know how quickly the network security field moves, but I know if we look at other fields of technology, they don't actually move that quickly, but I'm actually very impressed by how quickly a lot of VPN services are picking WireGuard up. Now, one of the benefits besides all of these services picking it up is that once something becomes a de facto standard, like say, I don't know, SSH, or for example, configuring your Wi-Fi. So all I have to do now to configure my Wi-Fi is click on this little GUI thing, I click on a network and it does everything magically. I don't need to think about it. And that's one of the benefits of something becoming a standard. Once something's a standard, people start building tools on top of it, which just basically abstract out all the difficult stuff and then make it really, really easy for someone who just has no idea what they're doing like me. I don't feel like working out how to configure my Wi-Fi, but there's this GUI thing. I can just click on a thing and it just all works. And that's one of the benefits of having standards. Now let's have a look at the second article. So this one is from 2018. At long last, WireGuard VPN is on its way into Linux. Now I'm not gonna read all of this. There's a bit in here I wanted to read a bit later though. So the reason it took longer than expected is because WireGuard's principal designer, Jason Donenfeld, disliked Linux built-in cryptographic subsystem on the grounds its application programming interface API was too complex and difficult. He suggested it be supplemented with the cryptographic subsystem, his own Zinc library. I have no idea if either of those libraries are good. I assume they probably are. This is way above my wheelhouse though. So many developers didn't like this. They saw this as wasting time reinventing the cryptographic wheel. Why are there so many spelling mistakes on ZDNet? But Donenfeld had an important ally. Torvalds wrote, I'm a thousand percent with Jason on this. The crypto slash model, another mistake, is hard to use, inefficient and completely pointless when you know what your cipher or hash algorithm is and your CPU just does it well directly. In the end, Donenfeld compromised. WireGuard will get ported to the existing crypto API, so it's probably better just to fully embrace it and afterward work evolutionary to get Zinc into Linux piecemeal. That's exactly what happened with some Zinc elements, not Zine. Uh, they have been ported into the legacy crypto code in the forthcoming Linux 5.5 kernel. This is a bit of an older article. I said 2018 before, it's actually 2019. The 5.5 kernel is the current kernel, at least on Arch. Obviously, if you're on a Ubuntu, you probably have a bit of an older kernel. But this laid the foundation for WireGuard to finally ship in Linux early next year, which is this year, 2020. So, WireGuard works by securely encapsulating IP packets over UDP. Its authentication interface design has more to do with SSH than other VPNs. You simply configure the WireGuard interface with your private key and your peers' public keys and you're ready to talk securely. Now, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. As I said, I am not a network security professional. I assume that there are people who are far smarter than me who have looked at this and assume that's a good idea. So, one thing I also wanted to read is actually from OpenVPN. So they have a very different approach to it than ZDNet does. So ZDNet is kind of pitting the two technologies against each other and not just ZDNet. Also this article we have here from Ars Technica and also this one from Modem Friendly. This one is in favor of OpenVPN. This one is in favor of WireGuard. So OpenVPN themselves actually take a slightly different approach to it. So let's just have a look at their bit of comment on this. So most importantly, since both OpenVPN and WireGuard are open source projects, they're both focused on collaboration. Developers from both projects are discussing the challenges related to providing solid and efficient open source based VPN solutions. We are all interested in ensuring that end users have the best solutions at hand, which can only be truly achieved by working in open and collaborating together. We believe in open source development, which is about connecting and creating solutions together. So when the article pits these projects against each other, it misses the point of what open source protocol is all about, collaboration and sharing. So yes, the WireGuard and OpenVPN open source projects can be seen as competitors, but both projects can build on each other's innovation, which is why OpenVPN welcomes new projects like WireGuard. We each have independent and different goals based on our users' demands, but that doesn't mean we need to compete. So ultimately they will be competing, 
But it's nice to see that OpenVPN isn't taking a complete hostile approach to a new competitor coming into the market. So I did mention that we also have these two articles here. So we have this article from Ars Technica. So WireGuard VPN review, a new type of VPN offers serious advantages. I'm not going to read this, but this pretty much goes over why WireGuard is better. And the guy who wrote this is just significantly smarter than I am. So go read this article and you'll find far more than I can probably tell you about WireGuard. I can read some articles. I can't really tell you why it's better though. And then we've got this article over here from Modem Friendly, which talks about why OpenVPN is better. So I've got absolutely no idea whether the Ars Technica article for WireGuard or whether the modem friendly article for OpenVPN make a better argument. I don't know whether OpenVPN's better, I don't know whether WireGuard's better. I don't even know if it even matters or if they're just both really good VPN protocols and in the end just pick one of them and you'll probably be fine. As I said earlier in the video and a couple of times throughout it, I'm not an expert in network security. Do not take my advice on anything network security related at all. But if some of you guys are experts in it, then leave some comments down below just actually making some arguments for some of these protocols or why you don't think it matters or just anything that you feel like I've missed and you think is actually really important to cover. But as for me, I just think it's cool to see more competition appearing in the VPN space so we can have stronger and stronger methods of actually protecting our data online. So as I was saying before, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. It should be tech news and I've done a couple of those lately and there might be something interesting in there for you, so go check that out. Down below, I've got all of my social links, so if you want to see my Discord or my Telegram or anything like that, go check those out. I've also got my support links, so if you'd like to support the channel, then I've got a Patreon and a couple other methods down below, so feel free to use any of those. But as always, if you don't feel like supporting the channel, then you don't have to. And also down below, I've got all of my alternate video platforms, so my BitTube and my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check those out. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.